You got to know I'm excited about this. The total solar eclipse is exactly one month away. It'll be happening on April 8th, and we won't get another one over the contiguous U.S. until 2044. So get your solar viewing glasses. Get ready to witness the moon blocking the sun. And in southern Illinois, it will be a total eclipse. Joining us now with more on what we can expect here and elsewhere is Nikki Rail, NASA flight director and heliophysicist with the NASA. And Nikki, you and I were just talking. You got to be getting excited about about this eclipse, aren't you? Oh yeah, I can, I'm thrilled. I can't wait. I largely missed the last one, and I, I'm beyond excited for the oh, upcoming. Oh no, it was so it was so wonderful. Uh, now you're going to be in Indianapolis, one of several big cities that this is going to be passing over. I am. That's correct. I'm hopefully going to be with my family, and we're going to have some NASA events. There's going to be NASA events across the nation, and a wonderful opportunity for many people across the U.S. to really uh, to visualize this eclipse. Yeah, you think of you know, Austin, San Antonio, Dallas, Little Rock, uh, Indianapolis, you mentioned, Cleveland, Buffalo, even Montreal. But in Chicago, we are not going to get the total eclipse. We're going to see a really impressive partial eclipse. So what kind of things will we see, and what's the safest way to view it, Nikki? Yeah, so you will still see a great event, a partial eclipse, and at 93% in Chicago, that is still a, a pretty fantastic uh, viewing of a partial eclipse. As the moon moves in to block out the um, the light of the sun, you're going to see a, a pretty close to a full eclipse, but a partial eclipse. We're going to be able to um, experience a longer duration during this eclipse, about four and a half minutes of totality, uh, depending on where you are on the path, um, and really experience that time of the light being blocked out. Now, as for transitioning in and out of uh, the totality, you are, like, as you mentioned, you're going to need some solar glasses mm -hmm. or um, a solar filter or to use an indirect viewing method to keep your eyes safe, which is first and foremost impor of importance. Yeah, you Google pinhole camera, and I think that's uh, the projection method would be great. All right, uh, I want to bring up the science of eclipse viewing. Back in 1919, Sir Arthur Eddington conducted an experiment. He went and photographed the eclipse of the sun to prove Einstein's theory of relativity. Is there anything else we, or you in particular, learn now from total eclipses or is it just all a wow show? Well, it is wow, but I'm so glad you brought up the science and how much the ch science has changed over time. We have the opportunity to visualize the corona or the outer atmosphere of the sun during an eclipse, which we can't usually see um, when there's so much uh, bright visual light there. Mm -hmm. And so during this time, we can see, um, you know, really good view of our coronal mass ejections and flares and uh, understanding and visibility of the energy transfer between um, the sun and the upper atmosphere of the earth. So it's an incredible time for science. It's an incredible time for citizen science, for your viewers to help participate in taking observations of the things that are going around and they're observing. But um, we're really excited for the moments of totality and transitioning in and out for science. Nikki Rail, we appreciate your time this morning. Hoping for good weather for you in Indianapolis at the Motor Speed Anyway, what a fun place to watch the eclipse. And I'll be in Marion, <laughs> Illinois, right on that center line. We appreciate your thoughts this morning. Nikki Rail from NASA. And Thanks we so will much. be back.